I think I'm live now. <clears throat> I am now. Let me turn off the volume for this so that I don't get a bleed back. All right, so let's try this again. I don't know what I was thinking. I've just been thinking a lot about PsyCon and people just been, well, we've been talking about it. Everybody I know that who's going has just been blah, 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 PsyCon, PsyCon, PsyCon. So, okay, turn off the volume. There we go. Okay, so now I can see your comments. All right, and now I can screen share. Oh my gosh, I don't know what I was thinking. So let me start over. PsyCon is coming up. I will be there on Tuesday afternoon. The actual conference doesn't start until Thursday and it runs till Sunday. And that would be coming the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Well, you've got, I'm sure you're already going because if you're watching this, why would you watch this if, if you weren't going? And <laughs> you didn't already have your tickets. Lots of stuff to tell you in no particular order, but let's start at the beginning, okay? If you haven't been to Vegas before, or it's been a long time since you've been to Vegas, I hope you're arriving early so you can go do some of the vegas -y things. Because once the conference starts on Thursday, you're going to find very little time to go out beyond the um, the, ev the event, the conference. And I, I probably won't really leave the hotel or the casino since after Thursday. Well, I've got one event planned for Friday night, but you guys can't go. I'm going to go see... I'm going to go do something clandestine, and it is going to be interesting. You'll be able to read about it in Skeptical Inquirer if if anything happens um, in a month or so. So anyway, um, there's let's go through the schedule. Let's go through some stuff. This will probably be a little bit of a long video. I hope you enjoy it. Leave me your comments so I can see. There's a lot of people who might be watching or listening right now who have definitely gone to PsyCon before or other kinds of skeptical conferences and <clears throat> there's it's a social it's a social kind of event I know there's gonna be some amazing talks and some very famous speakers that are going to be there that's that's terrific but as I've always said you go for the speakers you return for the people because it's an it's a it's a way of finding your people it's a way of getting your um, speaking to the choir yes but Sometimes we need to speak to the choir. I I um, need my embers kicked once in a while too, because you know you start to fade with all the misinformation out there, all the nonsense, and you're like, oh my gosh, you know how could people think the people the Democrats are <laughs> are controlling the weather? I mean, how do you reason with these people? Okay, so with that said, it is a good. It's really great to be around people who are ourselves our peoples. So you will be around a highly vaccinated crowd. A lot of people will have had their vaccinations. I got my flu vaccination. Hopefully it takes effect and in, in soon enough. Um, my COVID, I'm all fine and everything like that. But if you are compromised or if you're worried about it, yes, you're going to be in Vegas and you're flying in possibly a bunch of you guys and if you want to wear a mask, nobody's going to say anything. Go for it. Nobody cares. Wear masks. We don't, we don't, nobody's going to be like looking at you funny or something like that. And even though we're going to be a highly vaccinated crowd of people, you are going to be interacting with people who are not, you know, because there's people all over the place, not in our conference necessarily. And even, even vaccinated people get sick. So I would, I would suggest that would be a good idea. Go make sure you get all your shots, even though it is getting a little late, but you should still have all your shots. Hey, don't forget to get your shingles shot. I know it's not contagious, but oh my gosh, shingles are awful. So let me, let's, let's just throw that out there. So I've got a lot of things. All right. Go to the PsyCon page on Facebook. Now you're watching me possibly on Facebook right now. <clears throat> So there is this, let's, let's share this with you. This is the PsyCon Facebook page. Now I am an admin on this, on this page. So if something needs to be posted on there, you can let me know and I'll do my best to post it on there. But once the conference gets going, I'm going to be full on, full on having a good time mode. Okay. So this is the Facebook page and it goes way back. You'll be able to see uh, posts from years ago. Usually I take a lot of photographs and I'll put a link to it up here. 
or you can follow me on Facebook. This is a article that I wrote um, with some other people with their feedback on PsyCon 101. Now, this is from 2019. It is a little dated, but it's got a lot of really good information in there that I'm going to tell you some of it now, but I'd still would go ahead and, and um, check it out. And what you're seeing here with the photos, this is really typical. There's a lot of people just hanging out and, and um, there's always another room for more people at any table I'm sitting at. If not, let's start a second table because I really want, I really love the interaction. So Saikon is saying here um, is that they've got these giant crates that they got ready to bring to Saikon. And boy, let me tell you, there's going to be a lot going on. They've got books and, oh, geez. Um, this is an advertisement for LilyCon. Okay. I'm trying to do this in some sort of chronological order. The thing I was going to tell you first is this thread right here. Um, it is from September 3rd. This is the thread to comment on if you're looking for someone to share costs to or from the airport roommate or outside conference hours activities. Now, it's probably a little late to room share. The rooms, from what I understand, are all booked as with the uh, rate for PsyCon. So, um, and several people were looking for roommates and we were able to facilitate that. So as far as I know, I don't know of anybody who's looking for a roommate right now, but that might happen and you would post it in this thread. It's got 39 comments right here. See this? And one of the things we're doing, this is <laughs> Wendy, Wendy Hughes' hotel room, I think it was last two years ago and I've got my little uh, uh, eyeball, extra eyeball, my third eyeball on and people, we were just hanging out and there's no chairs in these rooms. I mean, there's like a chair in a hotel room and we just hung out all over the beds and everything. It was a lot of fun. So these are different people just hanging out at the, at the um, place and gossiping a bunch of chismosas that we are. But it was fun. Anyway, um, on this thread, you can put down what time you're arriving because what's going to end up happening is you're going to um, to cover costs because you, you you want to save as much money as you possibly can to be able to buy Psycon swag, right? And books. So one way of saving money and also maybe to meet a new friend is to post your arrival time, the airline, the time, and the day, obviously, on this thread and and look it over and see if there's anybody else who's arriving with you. And what you can do is you can private message them and maybe exchange phone numbers or whatever you want to do if they're arriving about the time you are. And you can say, hey, I'll wait for you, you know, it'll be another 15 minutes. I'll, I'll meet you down at baggage claim or whatever. And, and, and you work it out between yourselves. This happens all the time. And the people that you meet first are going to be the people that are you're going to feel comfortable hanging around with the rest of the conference. Let's face it. Almost everybody who attends uh, these kinds of conferences are introverts, right? So it's kind of hard to, to make, strike up conversations with strangers now. I'm not an introvert, but I, I have enough friends that are, and I know how how much of a struggle it is for them to make new friends, to find somebody to have meals with and and so on so this is a really great way of uh, meeting somebody maybe two or three people and what you'll do is you'll take a taxi or a ride share and go to the horseshoe casino and it's a nice way of meeting people right away put as, as many people as you can get in there you know it doesn't have to be a formal thing where they say oh my gosh my plane is going to be two hours late you don't have to hang around for them. You'll be like, okay, I'll catch you later. I'll see if I can find somebody else. And that's just the way it works. Anyway, been doing this for years and it seems to work out really well. You guys work it out between yourselves. If you want to go to do another activity outside of Psych on Hours, which um, I would say only do before the conference, then here's a place you might also find somebody who wants to go. I believe there's a conversation on here about people who want to go see Penn and Teller. Um, I love the Pinball Museum. I want to spend all my time, free time at the Pinball Museum. It's not, you know, I usually go with a group of people, groups of people, but I want to stay and they want to go. So <laughs> yeah, maybe I should just go by myself. That's always fun. It's, it, it's not close. You can't walk to it. So let me remind you 
nothing is really that walkable in Vegas. So when it says something's next door, that is not like your next door neighbor. It is like a city block next door. And it's it's not close. Nothing is close in downtown Vegas. So we used to go to the Flamingo. We were there for, I don't know, three years or something. It's across the street from that is where the Horseshoe is. The Horseshoe used to be the Bally's. Um, and it, so it's it's redone. And last year I went uh, with Carl with a K. We went wandering around looking and seeing what the Horseshoe was like. And it is it is new. And we only went through the bottom floor and it really is nice. So um, there's a really nice food court down there. Oh, I should have had some photos pulled up for you guys. There's a, a nice food court down there that's got, um, it's a little expensive, but it is a normal food court kind of stuff. It, but it's clean and it is um, spread out. And the problem is, is that you can't move the chairs around. I think they were all, I think they were all like, connected to tables and I don't like that kind of environment I want to be able to mingle I want to move chairs put 10 chairs at a table made for four <laughs> I like that kind of thing anyway so you are in Vegas if you are like the rest of the world uh, you're probably not so used to cigarettes in Vegas in this casino they do allow smoking and it's like walking into the 1980s every time I and I I encounter that. I, I just can't stand cigarette smoke. But um, if you're going through the casino, that's probably the only place you're going to encounter it. It should not be in any of the restaurants. It will be nowhere near our, our conference site. Nothing, nowhere, nothing. But um, I don't even think they do it in elevators or anything like that. I can't even imagine. Ooh. But um, so so there will be some cigarette smoke in there. They, Bally's is new, so hopefully they've got some ventilators to get it, get it in and out very well. I mean, people smoke, ooh, like the big uh, stogies. The, uh, it's weird. Okay. If you do it, more power to you. Uh, no, I'm not into it. Um, all right. Let's talk about name tags. This is on Thursday right we get our we get our we can go get our stuff on thursday yeah registration starts at 8 a.m so if you're on that's that's the time of vegas so hopefully if you're coming from the east coast or the west i uh, mean east coast or some other time zone you've acclimated to the time change because um it is 8 a.m so you're going to go and I have a map of the place I will show you. Now, again, I have not been to this place before. So this is the map that um, Psycon has given us. And this is conference floor number 26. This is going to be super awesome, you guys. So these blue areas over here, Sky View 5. Now, see, here's the elevators right here in the middle. So I guess you go up there and here's our thing. Now, I'm not exactly sure where the... Um, area is where you're going to get your name tags and things but i'm sure it's somewhere really close to this area here because this is all this is all they gave us this is it and i don't see bathrooms well i'm sure there are bathrooms <laughs> there's also a book room so i don't see that on here all right so okay so the map sucks all right but we are on floor 26 so what I have been told by people who know that this is a banquet room, like a room that you would have rented for a wedding. It's very beautiful. It has windows all the way around. And what they've managed to do is they put up some sort of stage and they're going to put, and they're going to black out all the windows there. So if you're in the audience looking at the stage, you're going to just see the stage and lighting and, you know, the lectern and the podium and all that kind of stuff. But, if you walk around the room, for what I understand, you're going to be able to see the city. You're going to you're on the 26th floor, so it should be very beautiful. Um, the ceilings are lower, so they're going to have multiple screens scattered around. Whereas at Psycon in the past, they've had giant, giant uh, ceilings, and then they had like two huge screens. So this won't be like that. 
So it's going to have a different feel to it. Another thing to let you know, um, PsyCon last year, I think, had 550 people. This one may max out at over 700 people. And I've been told, okay, I'm just passing on what I've been told, that this room fits 750 people. So that means we are looking for an intimate crowd. You're not going to be sitting down and having nobody sitting next to you probably this year. So if 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 that is something you like, well, all right. If it's something that kind of freaks you out a little bit, having all these people all over the place, you better work on your social skills of what to say to the person sitting next to you. But um, lots of people get up and they stand around the outside. I do that a lot because I can't stand sitting for a long period of time and I like to take photos. So I get up and I stand or I go into the back of the room and stand. So, I mean, that's common. Lots of people do it. All right. Mm -hmm. Name tags. Now, this is not the name tag for Psychon. Of course, I couldn't find mine right at the moment. But what I want to tell you about your name tag. So you're going to get a packet of, of information when you go at 8 a.m.-ish on Thursday. Now, of course, this is going to be open for a lot of hours. It's not going to be just 8 a.m. You better be there. No, no, of course, you'll be able to get your tickets and all that later. So anything that you have paid extra for workshops or something of the sort, or if you're in the VIP lunch, all the tickets will be in this folder they're going to give you. And I guess there's a paper folder with a schedule and things. That's what they've done in the past. There will be a name tag with a lanyard. Now, I've been to a lot of conferences and you might have too. So maybe you have better tips than I have. I should look and see if anybody's writing to me and saying, what, what are you talking about? There's no comments. Okay, at least none showing up here. So what you want to do is you want to always wear your name tag, even outside of the conference hours, because this is how we find you. Now, there's going to be other things going on in the casino and at the hotel that have nothing to do with us. In the past, we were there with BMX bikes at a different casino. Um, oh, one year it was that guy. What was his name? The the karate guy who um, really famous can't think of his name he's kind of a kook um somebody will remember his name he was there they had a conference with him there and they all lined up right outside of our conference space it was really funny bruce no i can't think of his name right now anyway uh we've had oh last year <laughs> last year at psychon at the flamingo it was domino people people domino people now i've never heard of i mean i know what dominoes are the little things with the little dots on them they have teams that are they were coming from all over i think it's mostly south america and they had their their look like bowling shirts and they had dominoes on the back and it was crazy so it was really funny. It was fun because they were all over the place, but they, um, you know, there it was a different conference going on simultaneously as ours. So I don't know what will be here this year, but um, anyway, so you wear your name tag. Now you wear your name tag to identify yourself with anybody else. As long as you got your name tag on, you're welcome to, like I say, hang out wherever I'm at, or you know, I'm going to try to invite you if if you're if you're okay with that. If I see somebody wandering around and looks like they're by themselves and they don't have and they have a name tag on them and say, hey, we're over here, come come hang out. And I'll, you know, maybe set you next to somebody. So if that's not all right with you and you'd rather be, you know, on your own, or you're looking for your own group to say, hey, no, 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 thanks. That's all right. But having your name tag tag on is going to identify you with everybody else in the in uh in the conference. So what I suggest is you put your room key in the little pocket part in the back. It's just very handy to have your room key there and also put your business cards in the little thing back here. And you could put them so that they stick up like, like maybe like this. So you can see them like that. But it's it's a good idea to have a, a bunch of business cards because you're gonna you're gonna pan out your business card because you're gonna be meeting a lot of new people. So it's a good idea to do that. When you take your name tag off, when you get to your hotel room. Take the name tag and hang it up on the door handle to leave. So you walk in the door, you close the door, 
put it on the door handle so that when you walk out for breakfast or for whatever you're going to do the next day, you will see your name tag and you will know exactly where you left it and, and you'll be able to go with it. And that's always a good idea to have your room key in there also because then you know you have your room key with you at all times. So that's just a little tip that I have for people. Um, usually they're pretty good about flipping um, where the name tag has your name on one side and it always flips to the other side. So write your name on the other side. Also, now this one doesn't have it so much, but there is a little, usually a little thing that goes like this, a little thing that kind of goes like this. What you want to do is you want to pull it up so that your name tag and put your head through it. I'll show you how to do it because I'm, I'm sure I'm going to see you. <laughs> and you got your name tag hanging down here to your groin area or your belly button area. And nobody wants to be looking down at your belly button. I mean, no. So what you want to do is you want to, you want to pull this little thing up, put your head through the, the other part so that your name tags up here. Okay. Because when we're, when people are talking to you, even if you've introduced yourself, we'll have forgotten your name after about 30 seconds. Okay. So it's instead of keep asking <laughs> the person's name, put it right here. Chuck Norris. Thank you, Carmen. Oh my gosh. I would have thought of that at two in the morning and I would have bugged me. Yeah, Chuck Norris. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. Chuck Norris is, had this whole group over there. We were telling people, come to us, come over here. <laughs> they were there to see Chuck Norris who had a bodyguard of people with him everywhere he went. It was really interesting. We we're like, Chuck Norris, I thought he kicked ass, but okay, whatever. Put your name tag up here. Da, da, da. Please, please put your name tag up here. Nobody wants to look at your belly button. Well, I don't know. Maybe you have a really nice looking belly button. Who knows? All right. Um, room key cards put on your doorknob so you don't forget it. Get a ride to the conference to help you find people that you know and helps you uh, save some cash. Um, there's going to be at least 700 people. Ooh, I don't know. It's going to be tight. Um, and some of the things you should pack. Chapstick. Now, I'm not from an area that has dry weather. I, this is just totally foreign to me to be in an area like Vegas. So you want chapstick. You want hand sanitizer. You want lotion. And of course, you're going to get a little small thing of lotion. Um, nail file, those kinds of things are always good because you are going to, it's dry and you're going to be washing your hands a lot. So you really want to have some kind of moisturizers and the chapstick, I'm telling you, it is, or lipstick, nobody, nobody cares um, because it is just that kind of environment where the air, uh, air conditioning just dries you up. I live in an area that doesn't do air conditioning. We just, it's just not that kind of place where I live. It's just very temperate here. So I, I freak out with too much air conditioning and that kind of area. Also, they air condition the heck out of these buildings. So if you're somebody like me who can get a little cool in a lot of environments, bring a sweater, bring a sweatshirt, bring a jacket. It is casual. It's cash, man. So, so wear comfortable clothes, comfortable shoes. I mean, if you really want to dress up, go for it. Nobody's going to care. But most people are going to be wearing their nerdiest t-shirts. That's that's really what we do. And a nice jacket, light jacket's nice because then you have you have pockets for your chapstick and so on. I usually take like list, um, listerine little things and stuff like that because I'm talking to people up close and and I, I don't want them smelling my breath. Tic Tacs, that kind of thing are always good. So, um, you know, those kinds of things are really great to take. Okay. I'm going to hopefully mention this multiple times. Take cash. Yes, I know we live in a mostly cashless society. You don't got no cash. Take cash in small bills because you are going to find that you're in situations with other people that you may or may not have arranged to be in with, um, and I'm not talking about pinning them on anybody's or stapling to anybody's forehead. I'm talking about you're at lunch, breakfast, or you're in a Uber ride chair, whatever, and you need to split costs. And it's not quick to ask uh, separate checks. Come on now. Um, maybe you'll be in that situation, but it's time consuming. And a lot of the time it's like, oh, hurry up. We're going to get back. We're going to get back. 
So tr sometimes with larger groups, one person will take all the cash, put it on, and then put it all on their credit card. And then that way everybody's out of there quick, leave enough for tips and stuff. Yeah. If you're not familiar, if you're from Australia or whatever, you're going to, this is a, we tip in America. That's how these people um, are able to um, survive. And um, anyway, so take lots and lots of small bills, $20 and under, and just go, go to your bank. I mean, you can still go to a bank nowadays and get ones, fives, tens, and twenties. You could thank me later that this is a way of, I mean, and if you don't spend it, okay, you don't spend it. Then you've got cash for, for another conference, but um, um, it's, it's just really good to have that because you're going to be interacting with people and you leave your tips on, like if you, I don't know if there's a buffet. Hmm. So Carmen's just asked a really great question. She wants to know if there's going to be tables or only chairs in the conference room. I love tables. I think it's just going to be chairs, Carmen, because I believe it's going to be so, um, I think we're really going to fill that thing up. But boy, I wish there were tables there. Take note paper or a notebook or something like that and take with you a pen for signing things. Because I know Carmen, she says rats. No, there will be no rats there. I Trust me, they don't know how to get to the 26th floor. They don't, they can't get their little, their little hands to, now the raccoons might be able to do it, but no, no, the rats aren't going to be able to get to the little buttons to push. So take um, pens and, and so on, because you are going to want to get things autographed and you're going to be taking notes and you're going to be, so make sure you have some writing utensils and either a little notebook. Mark Edward got this, he'd love this little notebook for, um, you know, taking notes. These are always good to have something like that because there's going to be so much going on and you're just going to be, by the time this is over your head, it's going to be like, oh my gosh. <sighs> Carmen's been to a bunch of these, so she's probably got lots of tips. You fill me in, Carmen, if, if I miss something. All right. Thursday morning, 8 a.m., is when you can get your name tags. The first workshop is at 11.30, and then there's a, and then that's asking good questions of others and yourself. 11.30 to one. Now, from what I understand, all these small workshops are sold out. So you messed up if you didn't get a chance to get in. If you thought you were gonna be able to just walk, waltz right in, no, no. People who attend these workshops in the past know how damn good they are. So they always sell out. Um, so the asking good questions of yourself and others is going to be Chip and Grace Denham. And they've done this this many, many times. Um, and it's it's just a wonderful um, workshop. So sorry if you didn't get in. Um, workshops are fantastic on Thursday because it gives you the ability to sit at a table of usually 10 people and you get to know the people at the table. So you've got instant like, you know, hey, I don't know you. I'll sit and talk with you too. And you interact with them and it breaks the ice. And usually that's who you, you, you kind of hang around with. And then you got a table. So workshops are wonderful for that. So for future conferences, try to make sure you get a workshop. Now at, um, at 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock is LilyCon. Now, oh my gosh, you guys, I think there's still tickets for that. There's probably 20 tickets left. So if you can't get into the others and you're there on Thursday, you must go to LilyCon. Now, LilyCon was designed, it's named after Scott Lilienfeld. Um, and it's designed and run by a, a bunch of teachers, professors who teach critical thinking in schools. And they wanted a way of, um, you know, helping other people who are teaching critical thinking classes to have to network to share best source, you know, best uh, practices and that kind of thing. Um, so um, it's going to be academic angle, um, academic, what's it called, focused, but you do not have to be an academic to get a lot out of LilyCon. So this is the first year they're attempting it, and I really wanted to be successful. They're going to have paper presentations where I think it's going to be like down the hallway, they're going to have, you know, papers that are on stock board or something like that and you'll be able to go and read those throughout the conference so it's always nice to have something else to look at like that but LilyCon is going to be just incredibly 
important because we really want to get more critical thinking in the classrooms. That's like number one on people's to-do lists when they say, what should the skeptic community be focusing on is getting better critical thinking at the youngest levels possible. So some of the tips and things you'll learn in there are not just for being teaching at college level, but you know, how to work with um, students or um, children in your life, children, grandchildren, neighbors, children, whatever. There's gonna be so many resources. And as I said, networking opportunities in LilyCon. So that's from 12 to four o'clock on Thursday. So I think there's still tickets for that. So run and grab those if you can get them. Um, from 2.30 to 4, there's going to be um, another workshop called The Art of Memory. And I believe that's Banachek that's running that. So I don't think you can get in unless you already have your tickets. And where is, where is the workshop for? Oh, 9 to 11. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how I missed it. From 9 to 11 o'clock is Tricks of the Tricksters. And these are two very, very, very good friends of mine. Richard Saunders and Kenny Biddle are running this workshop. Um, they're going to do all kinds of really fun things. But again, it's probably sold out. But bring your spoon. Find a spoon somewhere, you guys. Some nice flexible spoon. <laughs> and bring it for Richard Saunders to see if he can bend. Uh, would you see him in the hallways and stuff like that? So that's always fun. Okay, so then... From four o'clock to seven o'clock, there's nothing happening. Ha 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 nothing happening. Nothing official is happening. So unlike most conferences that I know of, there's always something happening. And that's why it's important to put your information in the um, PsyCon Facebook page uh, if you're looking for something else to do, because there's people who are gonna go do things. There's going to be people going to dinner. Um, I don't know where, but it's probably one of the, some place that allows lots of people to join at the last minute. We, we always do that. We find a restaurant and people start gathering. They're like, hey, come on over. You know, you know, you got your name tag on. Come on over. You're part of the group. I know you're part of the group. I don't know who you are, but you're part of the group. Pull up a chair, have a seat. Again, bring cash. Even if you're not hungry, just come and hang out, have a drink or whatever. So that is probably what's going to happen on Thursday. So before seven o'clock. Now at seven o'clock, you're going to be up back in. I don't know if it's going to be the actual conference room. I guess it wouldn't be because there's going to be chairs in there, but it's going to be somewhere near there. Like I said, I haven't been here before. And, and traditionally what they do is it's just, they open the doors and inside it's got finger foods, you know, um, hors d'oeuvres. You know, uh, there's probably a cash bar. You can pay cash and you can get you can get a drink. So bring cash. And then there'll be, um, you know, fruits, crackers, cheeses, and that kind of thing. And they're spread out on different tables. And you just get in line, you buffet style, and you go serve yourself. That's how they've done it in the past. And you will not have any clue I, who you're going to be hanging around with, who's going to be there. It's going to be small tables. We're like made for four people. And then, you know, six, ten people get there. And there'll be chairs around the walls. It's it's more of a mingling, you know, like kind of like a cocktail um, affair, but at large, very large. It's going to hold hundreds of people in there. So that is going to be, so don't eat a huge meal <laughs> beforehand or save up for it. But don't think that you're going to be coming to this opening reception and eating large, large amounts of food because it's not going to be that kind of thing. So I assume there's going to be food here. I don't know. I don't think I can click on it. Let me see what it says. It's going to be in Skyview 2 and 3. And I'm not exactly sure where that is yet, but it's going to be in Skyview 2 and 3. And Robin Blumner, who's the CEO of, of uh, the Center for Inquiry, will be giving, um, she usually gives some kind of like a 10-minute or 5-10 minute kind of presentation about the conference. And Stephen Hupp, who's the editor of Skeptical Inquirer, of course, I don't have it handy right this second. And Eddie Tabosh who's an expert on the constitution and he's the chairman of C, uh, CSI, CFI. So they were gonna give some sort of presentation. If it is like it has been in the past, there will be finger food and just mingling. I never sit at a table. I am full on photo, photo, 
photographing everybody. So I'm just out taking pictures. So that's where you'll see me is taking lots and lots of photos. Then from 8 to 9.30, so immediately they're going to, after that, so for an hour, this mingling is going to be going on. And then we're going to probably move to the room where they're going to have the event. And they're going to be doing a, um, well, the main event where, where everybody's going to be hanging out on the 26th floor. And Brian Cox is going to do a keynote address. So you'll sit down and there's no assigned seatings or anything like that. You just sit wherever you want to sit. Um, but get your butt in a seat and sit down so we can listen to Brian Cox do a keynote address. So that'll be really fun. Now that's at, over at 930. Conference isn't over. People just go somewhere and they hang out. And I'm not exactly sure, but when we went to uh, the Horseshoe last year just to check it out, there was many hangout kind of areas in bar areas downstairs. It looked like several. And yes, there's going to be cigarette smoke around too. Um, that's just the nature of, of a casino. Uh, but you'll be able to get drinks and things like that. Or there's always the food court and possibly there'll be some other hangout area that I'm not aware of yet. Okay, and that'll go on for a long time. As long as you want, you can sit and hang out or whatever you want to do. So Thursday can be a long day. Um, if there's something that you want to do or meet up with somebody at um, or go to do something, put it into the Facebook group or tell me, put it on that thread and that maybe other people will join you to go to see Penn and Teller that night, that afternoon um, or something of the sort. All right. Boom. Next day is Friday, Friday, the 25th of October. This is registration and bookstore. Now I'm going to be in the bookstore almost the entire conference. I have a table for the Gorilla Skeptic set up. I'm going to be doing um, uh, recruiting, trying to get people to come in and uh, join the GSOW project. I will be talking about a lot of other things. I do have a flyer that I made. Okay, now this is hokey. Nobody make fun of this, all right? Pull it up. Don't be making fun of this. But I have a flyer I'm going to get for the table. And um, the LA Skeptics, I believe, are doing something also similar where we're trying to promote people who are excited about being at PsyCon and finding people. There's going to be a lot of people who've never been to one of these events before. So I'm going to be really pushing Skeptic Camps. And this is a QR code for what is a Skeptic Camp and how do you put one on? And then these are the next three skeptic camps that are coming up. The New York City Skeptics, December 7th. Uh, my group in Monterey County is going to be January 3rd, 3rd through 5th. So the first weekend of the year. And Los Angeles Skeptics have March 7th through the 9th are having a skeptic camp. So um, you can click on those QR codes and that'll take you to the website. Now there's going to be a bunch more skeptic camps going on, but I didn't get the date. So what you can do is you can go down here to this QR and this is a QR code goes to a website from the Center for Inquiry and what it has is has find your local group. Now, a lot more skeptic camps are going to be happening in 2025, um, but like I said, they weren't finalized on the date, so I don't feel comfortable sharing them. There will be swag on, on my table from a lot of other groups. And if you're with a group, a skeptic group, and you want to bring your swag or you want to print out little flyers or something, bring them. I'm happy to have those on there, but um, uh, make sure you get them all off my table whenever it's time to leave because otherwise they just kind of go in the trash and I hate to see anything go in the trash. Nothing is for sale on my table. It's all just probably candy and hand sanitizer and helpful hints about what to do and how to be involved in more things and hopefully steer you into a, a local skeptic group. All right, so that's a bookstore. There's going to be tables set up in the bookstore that have books on them from the speakers who are going to be there. So you'll be able to get uh, books by um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I guess uh, Cox has has a book out and there's you know lots of books. So you can get the books and get them autographed. Some people will have autographed times where they will, like you have to get in line because there's going to be so many people. Other people, you can just get the book, carry it around with you. Get a nice book bag, carry it around with you, put everything in. That's a good thing to keep as a backpack or a book bag. And then make sure you always have your pen with you. And then when you see them in line or or wherever, you can say, oh, could I please get the sign? I mean, they're almost always happy to, to sign and autograph your book. So it's, it's a good idea to do that kind of thing. 
So at, at uh, 845 on Friday, this is the opening remarks. We're going to be, the MC this year is going to be uh, Jim Underdown. It's for sure he's doing something quite like this. It's not going to be George Robb or um, Leanne Lord. Leanne Lord ended up having some conflict. I think she was going to be the MC this year. And then when they when she had the conflict and they asked George Robb, George Robb already had a conflict at that point. So uh, Jim Underdown, I'm sure he's going to do a fine job. If you can understand his accent, because he's from Chicago. So <laughs> kind of always sounds like a mob boss, you know. No, I'm only kidding. I love Chicago. I've never been there, but I'm sure I would love Chicago. Send me to Chicago. I'd love to go to Chicago. I'm only joking. Okay, then we're going to see um, we're going to see a series of talks. There's going to be three talks. Uh, Nine o'clock is going to be Masimo Pelaguchi, who's a philosopher. And then it's going to be my dear friend, Melanie Tr Trisha King. Why do we fall for misinformation? And then when skeptics disagree by Stephen Novella. That should be really fascinating also because Stephen Novella has been around for a very long time and he's going to know all about uh, the, hopefully he'll be able to help us out with some of this. And there's been so much going on in years past with skeptics disagreeing and then they 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 lose sight of the fact that we're we're all different people and we all have different um uh, journeys and some of us may be more skeptical about some things and not other things. And most people that will be here attending are atheists, but not all atheists are skeptics, if you get my meaning. So then there's going to be a book signing. And then we're going to see uh, three more. Timothy Caulfield from Canada. Oh, he's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Then Rena Raphael and Nick Tiller, who is our fitness uh, does fitness stuff and uh, Rena is going to be talking about the media's role in health misinformation and um, on the skeptical inquire website center for inquiry there are a bunch of interviews that Rob Palmer has done with a lot of these speakers so go to the center for inquiries YouTube channel let's pull it up since you're here Center for ink. Oops, 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 oops. I think I have too much lotion on my hands. <laughs> so you go to the Center for Inquiries YouTube channel. You should subscribe and hit the little bell. But Rob has for the last few years been doing interviews with people who are who are future speakers. And there's all kinds of different talks in here. So it's Center for Inquiry. There you go. And you can is there a playlist for Rob? Let's see if there's a playlist for Rob. Oh, no, I don't see a playlist. <sighs> Sigh. Okay. Videos, though. But you can go through here and you can see, like, here's Eddie Tabash, who's going to be talking. Um, here is an interview with Banachek. Here's an interview with me um, for talking about some of the things I'm talking about now, the things they don't want you to know. Down here, you'll see some other interviews. There's an interview with Daniel Sim Simmons. Uh, Forrest Valkyrie, Timothy Caulfield, Andrea Love, um, who else? Neil deGrasse Tyson, Kevin Folta, you know, different people who will be speakers. So you can learn about who these people are by looking in here. You could also go up to the search box up here and type in the person's name just in case there's been an older video of them. But it's, he does these in interview style and some are some are not marked. Um, Rob, some of them are other people who've done interviews with them, but it, it's a conversational one-on-one -on -one, figure out who the person is. And so you can get more information about their, about their content. So you'd be able to talk to them later because pretty much all the speakers are approachable. Um, so then there's lunch from 1230 to two. There's a VIP lunch if you want to go. I don't know if there's any tickets left, but a lot of it is money for donations for Center for Inquiry, and you get to sit with some somebody famous, right? Then we have three also um, speakers after that. We've got Kevin Fulta, who's just freaking amazing, who is in Florida. I don't know, single-handedly keeping back the waters. I, I don't know how they do it there. He's, he's going to be talking about um, 
genetic engineering, GMOs, and disinformation with that. And then Forrest Valky, I have not met him yet, but I've seen his interviews. Um, he's he supposedly he's very, very popular. He has a very popular YouTube channel. And I've seen Rob interview him for the channel. And then ooh, one of my favorite psyche detectives with uh, Richard Saunders. And he's coming all the way from Australia. So you guys make sure you give him lots of attention. He's what a talent. Um, so Richard Saunders is going to be talking about psychic detectives. He knows a lot about the psychic world. Um, it, it should be really fun. There's a book signing again. And then there's a panel. Longevity lies in the fountain of youth. Who's on this panel? Oh, Caulfield, Raphael, and Nick Tiller. Ooh, that should be interesting. And then after that, okay, that's over at five. And then from five to eight, there's going to be nothing. And then it's Neil deGrasse Tyson comes back. More cosmic perspectives on civilization with Neil deGrasse Tyson. But I said there's nothing happening. Didn't I say there's nothing happening? But no, Susan, come on, girl. You know there's going to be something happening. Yes, something will be happening. Let me pull this up. I had it open. Where did it go? All right. So my very dear friends, Wendy and Heather, oops, have decided on their own. These are, Wendy's been attending for years and years, and, and Heather has been attending a lot of conferences, skeptic conferences over the year, and they're very best friends. And they decided that since there's no Halloween party this year, which is usually comes with a theme of, of dressing up and, and costumes and stuff, since we're not doing that this year, they're organizing a space party. So I'm going to show you their little promo for this. Here you go. If I hit the right buttons, maybe I'll be able to show it to you. Calling all <laughs> space explorers. On October 25th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., we hope that you'll join us for an epic BYOB, BYOS, Bring your own snacks. Space themed gathering right before astrophysicists and my husband, Neil deGrasse Tyson, takes the stage at SciCon 2024. We will have invites floating your way soon, just like asteroids through space. The exact location is still TBA, but you can expect costumes, card games, camaraderie, and maybe even a moonwalk dance off. We can't promise zero gravity. So, whether you're an astronaut, an alien, or just a curious Earthling, grab your favorite space-themed t-shirt, costume, or spacesuit, and get ready to have a blast. See you in orbit before, before the, the big, big event. event. <laughs> Aren't they great? This is the kind of thing that I love, you know, it's kind of organic and uh, they're just, they're just fabulous people. So they're going to have, I think some of those dingle balls running around They've, uh, for people. Uh, I have my own dingle balls in a drawer somewhere that I just had from somewhere. But um, if you have space kind of thing, especially Pluto, because you know, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to be there, you know, bring it. So they're saying they haven't got a location because this is a new venue for us. We don't really know where it's going to be. But to find out where it is, you can talk to one of them. They're showing up on Monday. So hopefully they'll have a place figured out where we're going to go. Um, you know, I'm wary about it a little bit because um, what will be happening on Monday, Tuesday, when they're looking for a spot might not be great spot for it on Friday, because who knows, there might be a football game or some kind of sport, sport thing happening and it's or a band playing or something like that. I don't know. So, you know, this is just an informal gathering and they're doing it out of the love of, of, of socialization. And so, um, you know, for what it is, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I will be there for the beginning and then I have to go to the event I'm going to be going to that you will read about in Skeptical Inquirer, hopefully later on, but I'll be there for the least first hour or two. Then... Um, like I said, they don't know where that's going to be. So, so when they find out, they'll I'll have it at my table in the book room. Also, it'll be on the Facebook page for um, the Psycon on Facebook, that Psycon page I've been telling you about. So ask around if you don't know where this darn thing is, but find your goofy space kind of stuff. That'd be a lot of fun. Okay, so that's Friday, right? Then 
after the conference is over at eight or nine p.m., people are probably going to be out hanging around doing something else, meeting new friends, and so on. That's Friday, Saturday. All right. So now you're going to should be getting really tired, and you're going to be going through your your lotion and stuff like that, um, and your chapstick because it's going to be. Um, one of the things I've been thinking about, and is that it's expensive being in in Vegas. The food is expensive. Well, for me, it's expensive and lines can be long and you can't get in there, eat something and get out, get a table and all that as quickly as you would like to. It's just just the nature of things, especially once we get into Friday, Saturday and um, Friday and Saturday, it can be a real problem. So what you're you're looking for and if you do a podcast or a vlog or anything like that and you want to interview people, this is the time to do it. Hand out your card and, and just get. Take them and, and interview them right there. Um, there's going to be a lot of that going on. And um, so just be prepared for it. And if you have one, get everybody you possibly can. I'm I'm around if you want to interview me for whatever reason. I don't know. So on, where was I going with this? Oh, saving money. So here's something I'm going to try to do this year. Now, I don't know if it's going to be possible or not, but this is my this is my hope. Because I'm going to be flying in and I only have limited amount of space in my luggage, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to order a delivery of food from, an, from, a, from a place, like a, a grocery store, and see if I can get a delivery to the hotel. That way I have snacks and stuff and I don't have to bring them with me. I don't have to go get snacks, but that's my idea is to have stuff delivered, you know, um, cereal or and milk and um, sodas, you know, uh, whatever, because usually there's a, in the past, there's a CVS very close to the, the, the place, very close to, well, like I said, it's kind of like a block. Um, everything is, everything is not as close as you would think. And what a lot of people do is they would go to CVS and get Halloween candy and and stuff so that they could put it in their hotel room and save some money. Okay, so, you know, coffee, instant coffee, I don't know, whatever you guys eat and drink, but, but there's usually a refrigerator in each room. So that's what I'm going to try this year is to see if that works. Now, I don't know if I can get it delivered to a casino or not, but um, we'll see. I'm going to try it on uh, when I get there on Tuesday night or Wednesday. And and if it works, I'm going to put it up all over uh, the Facebook page and say, here's a good idea. Order it online. Yeah, you're going to spend a little money because you got delivery fees and all that kind of stuff. But you're going to save a ton of money and having snacks and things. I learned this from a, uh, somebody I met at a, a mentalism conference. He and his wife always do that. So I'm, I'm seeing him. He's got like a box of crackers and he's got this and he's always got food and snacks. And you're like, where are you getting all this from? We're stuck in this Marriott with <laughs> no way to go get anything. Oh, no, I have a delivery. It's waiting here when I get here. Okay. I'm going to try it. We'll see if that works. All right. Um, okay. So we're on Saturday. Saturday registration. Again, if you want to register, I mean, if you're showing up late or um, you want to pick up some books, book room. And then opening remarks at 8.45. And then we have Jerry Coyne, um, Natalia Pascarnat. Uh, I know I'm going to say it wrong. She's awesome. She's from Brazil. And then we have Michael Mann, the climate scientist. So all three of those are going to do talks. And then there's going to be a book signing. And then we have at 11 o'clock, David McRaney. And the birth of Vasquez. Now I don't know David McRaney. Um, I'm, they're not going to have anybody there who's going to do a horrible job. So I'm sure he's wonderful. How minds change is the talk he's going to be giving. I look forward to to um, hearing about that. And the birth of Vasquez. Why do we teach critical thinking in school? And she's just just wonderful. She's so great. Then you have lunch on your own, which means lunch with your new friends that you've just made, wherever that is. Default, we usually go to the food court. That's kind of just where everybody ends up at because it's as cheap as you can go without having to have food brought in somewhere and um, there's not a place to really hang out um where there's pizzas and stuff at least as far as i know i don't know of any 
And then we come back. We have Chris French, who's going to be coming from the UK. And he's an old friend of mine. Not that he's old, but he is an old friend of mine. That's wonderful. And then we have uh, Andreas, Andrea Love, um, who's talking about echo chambers, echo chambers versus evidence. And then Daniel si Siemens, S-I-M-O-N-S. -S. I know it's not Simons. It's, some, it's something else, because I've heard Rob talking about how his name is correctly said. And then at 4.30, we've got the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, the SGU, and they're on from 4.30 to 6. And then again, you've got a downtime of two and a half hours where people are hanging out, looking for food, uh, places to hang out. And then at 8.30 to 9.30, it's going to be Banachek's going to do his mentalism show, Mind Games. So that's going to be fun. I've seen it several times, so don't miss that. All right. Now that's Saturday. You're going to think, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. And you will be, not only from just constantly running around and just being off your schedule and meeting so many people and just, you know, you're going to want to fall into bed. It's hard to not want to stay up late, but I'm telling you, you do not want to miss Sunday morning. And this is like one of my favorite parts of the entire conference that they've ever run is the Sunday morning paper um, sessions. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this out of the bottom of my heart that, that you don't want to miss. It starts at nine till 12. And it's not just because I and Rob Palmer are running it. We've put it together. Um, Rob has given four presentations, I believe, for, for Sunday papers in the past. And I've done many different kinds of things like this. These are six people that we have found. They applied to be able to do a Sunday morning paper. And we've been rehearsing them and going over their slides and for months. So um, I know what you're going to be seeing and I'm hoping you're really going to enjoy it. I've, I've enjoyed meeting them virtually and listening to their presentations. Um, there's six of them. They're on six different topics and they are going to be giving these paper presentations. Uh, we have David, David Weinberg, then Bernie Garrett, <laughs> Sue Arachi, I know her uh, well, she's from Australia, Daniel Reed from the West Virginia Skeptic Society, Bruce Behrens, and then Karen Dogerly. And uh, I'm just really excited about you guys being able to meet them and uh, being able to listen to the presentations, which are going to be about 10 minutes-ish, 10 to 15 minutes. There's no Q&A. Oh, I should point that out. There's no Q&A at all during PsychOn. This is a decision that was made a long time ago, and I love it. Oh, wow. Carmen says she's driving in Thursday if she wants to just pick it up for us. Ooh. Hey, everybody. Carmen and Jerry said they'll get everybody's food. For them. <laughs> and Bill Patterson has said hi. Isn't that great? Hi, hi, Bill. Our Skepperty, our Skepperty, leader of Skepperty. So there's just so much. Okay. So I'm hoping that this gives you a nice overview. And I'm probably forgot a bunch of things. So tips um again a lot of people are um <laughs> wendy hughes says heather and her are making a pit stop at the alien jerky store on their way to psych on a monday we need to pick up snacks they're gonna get alien beef jerky oh <laughs> that should be interesting <laughs> just in case you guys have never eaten space alien before okay so <laughs> I'll leave it there. I'm not going to go where my mind went. When you are in these situations and you're a little shy, a little introverted, um, there's going to be people who have never been to one of these things before. Um, there's going to be people who, who are kind of awkward and not sure. All right. So here's what you do. If it is the beginning of the conference and you're sitting at a workshop or you're sitting in you know, waiting for the talk to happen or you didn't quite hear what the person said and you want to be able to talk to the person next to you and say, what was that? I didn't get that. So if it's the beginning of the conference, you can turn to the person next to you that you do not know, who doesn't know you and is just as nervous about meeting new people as you are and say, is this your first icon? Okay, that breaks the ice. And then you could say, what are you really looking forward to seeing or who are you really looking forward to seeing? And then they'll tell you and you can, you can have a conversation about it. And then you would be able to say who you're really looking forward to seeing. Okay. 
So it breaks the ice. It usually allows you to get a, it's a nice friendly conversation going. And, um, you know, it's, it's a nice way of just going there. Then later on in the conference, you could turn to somebody and you could say, what have you really enjoyed? You know, what have you learned? Or is there anybody in particular that you've really, um, that you didn't expect that, um, you know, you were going to learn something from or get something out of it? <laughs> Carmen says, anxiety warriors unite. See, I'm, I, I'm not built this way. I don't have that in me. So people have to teach me that there are people who have anxieties and um, um, deliberating. See, it doesn't even bother to me that I can't pronounce things. I don't care. Um, that are having anxiety and these kinds of things. I don't, it's just not there. So I've had to learn that people have these issues. Um, not issues, but have have this, which makes it a little more awkward for them to start conversation things. So you could try doing those kinds of things. Um, keep in mind that a lot of people who are there are also alone and don't know anybody and they'd be happy to talk to you. Okay, so take cash, take lotion, chapstick, uh, breath saver thingies, um, a sweater or jacket. Make sure you have your name tag always on um, and practice your elevator talk because you're representing our skeptic community, right? You're going to get into elevators and you might even have your dingle balls still on and you're going to get in an elevator with a bunch of muggles that are like, what, 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 what are, what are you doing? What, are you, what is this? And you need to have something to say because you're representing the community. You can't say, oh, well, Neil deGrasse Tyson, let me talk to him. He'll come over and tell you. No, no, Susan Gerbeck, I'll find her. She'll tell No, you are it. You're in the elevator with this person. They're like, well, what's this? So if you just have a floor, you know, it's just like doors open, doors closed. You've got like a minute. You want to come up with your presentation. Talk, you know, what is your elevator pitch? Typically I say, yes, this is a skeptics conference. Uh, meets here in Vegas every year. It's our large, a uh, very large conference, and we are scientific skeptics. That means we are, um, we're not skeptical of climate change. We're not skeptical of vaccines. We are pro science, very pro science people who are interested in the how misinformation is um, is uh, out there in society. We find it harmful. My good friend, Wendy, she says it's the intersection between science and consumer activism. I think she says something like that. It's really a good way of doing it. Mark Edward used to say that we are science activists. We're the people who are like standing up for science, but not necessarily scientists. We are people who are trying to uh, rid or correct the narrative when it comes to misinformation. We care deeply about science. So I would say, yes, we are a skeptic conference. I'm personally, I'm proud of the word. I'm fine with being a skeptic because it always means there's more conversation to come because we have to explain it. Not like an atheist conference where you just like, oh, we're atheists. Then, okay, they just go, why? <laughs> No, a skeptic conference always allows you to have more conversation. So yes, we're a skeptic conference. It's, um, um, I sometimes call Center for Inquiry like a think tank kind of thing or activist kind of thing. Depends on the conversation. But I always say we are a pro-science community. We believe in the scientific method. We are, cons we are consumer advocates. We are distressed at the amount of misinformation in society. Um, those are all kind of a, that's kind of a safe way of going about it and to get a, to get to somebody and they can go, you know, they can continue the conversation. Oh, that's really interesting. Well, tell me more. And you could give them the website or give them your card or whatever you want to do, or they make a, okay, then, and then they kind of back off. But the word skeptic, ah, Wendy's got it now. Skepticism is the intersection of science and consumer protection. We have fun with our brains. You just added that, Wendy. I don't remember you ever saying that before, but skepticism is the intersection of science and consumer protection. That is absolutely exactly a good pitch to remember for for a um, um, 
for an elevator pitch or if you're waiting in line at a restaurant getting a coffee or whatever. And that's another thing. There's a lot of problems. If you think you're to run down and get a coffee somewhere, um, there's always lines. So that's why it's a good idea to try to get something in your hotel room or or whatever, because it's you don't want to be missing stuff. Um, any other tips you guys out there watching? Oh, hey, Mark. Oh, he's not going to make it this year. And you're always here. Oh, bummer. Cat, Psycon isn't scheduled for 2025. Thank you, Cat, for reminding me. Okay, so I'm going to break some news here. Cat doesn't even know this. There is not a Psycon for 2025. And there is not a conference in Germany either. I was told there was going to be a conference, a World Cong Congress in Germany. So there's not. But there is something else that they have planned. Um, but I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you or not. But it's going to be in, I think, July in the United States. And it's going to be really nice. And it's an anniversary of something really big in history that's coming up. 100th anniversary of something. Okay, So I, I don't know how much I can say. So I don't know what I'm told. Um, yeah. Cat is making this great observation that if you can still get to Psycon, like if you could drive into Psycon, um, or you don't mind paying ridiculously high uh, airfare bills for getting a last minute ticket, there will not be a Psycon 2025 in Vegas. Um, we're hoping to do a, a skeptic camp. Um, and in 2026, Psycon will be held at the Center for Inquiry area in Buffalo, New York. And I think it's going to be in May. And that's because it's the 50th anniversary for the Center for Inquiry. So they've got um, a big hotel. Um, they're planning a big, big to do in Buffalo, New York. So people in the East Coast, that'll probably be a, it'll be better for you guys. So there will not be another Psycon thing in Vegas, at least for a while. So FYI. Thank you for reminding me of that, Kat. Because um, people are always saying, I'll go next year, I'll go next year. Well, you know what? Sorry. I was warning you last year that we better get to it this year because I don't know. You got to, if these, these things aren't necessarily a profit making, I don't think they make a profit or if they do, it's very tiny. And these are, some people complain about the price. You know, as I say, there's not much you can do about that because the conference space costs, the the everything costs. Um, having water dispensers in the room costs extra money. Having tables somewhere, that costs money. Everything is, is expensive. Now, Vegas is where we've had it for the last few years because usually they have great rates for people to to fly into Vegas and they can get good rates on the hotel rooms and things. If you manage to get a hotel room for this conference using the Psycon rate, trust me, you got a good deal because um, non-Psycon rates for the same time was hundreds of dollars more. So um, it is what it is. Now, there will be a bunch of people who are attending for the first time, young people. I know of one person who's going, who's, who's young, who's 17. And this person is extremely excited. But there isn't... A lot of these people are on a shoestring budget, okay? So if you have the generosity of mind and want to help them out, I'm sure I'm sure there'd be, um, I, I don't know how to say it without it being awkward to, to say it, but, you know, help them out if you can see that, they, that they're there. We want more young people to come to our conferences, so let's make sure we ask lots of questions, um, engage them in conversation, make sure they feel heard and seen. And that, um, you know, they're given when, when there's time for a QA, and a if there is a QA, and a that their questions are answered fast and first, not like the person who's just got some kind of whatever to say. Make sure your questions are always a question. Um, always bring cash. Something else I was going to say. Um, Watch your alcohol consumption. This is not a, confer a conference for drinking. Large 
quantity of alcohol. Uh, you want to get a good night's sleep if you can. Trust me. Take notes. Almost nobody gambles. Um, <laughs> Vegas probably loses money on this every year. Um, bring, oh, underpack when you go. Do not fill your luggage all the way up to the max. Leave some room in it for all the books that you're going to bring home and um, find books. Um, bring, you're going to get swag. There's going to be t-shirts, obviously. And there'll be other things that are probably people giving away and that kind of stuff. So please bring, make sure that you have extra room in your luggage so that you can take stuff home. Um, that was the thing I was going to say. Anyway, um, the conference is as Center for Inquiry has organized it uh, for the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry has organized it. It's phenomenal. There's going to be people that you meet there who are not on the schedule, but are celebrities in their own, you know, like Ross Blotcher and, and so on will be there. So, and others. So you will see people wandering around, be kind, nice of the considerate of their time. But, and there's lots of selfies being taken and that's usually okay. Ask first. But it's a social event. If you think you're going just to attend the talks, Okay, well, I mean, if that's all right with you, but you can get a lot more out of it if you're if you're willing to be a little vulnerable and say, hey, can I hang out? Or, hey, can I sit here? Or, how are you doing? You know, uh, is this your first conference? Are you enjoying yourself? Or, um, I heard there's going to be a space party on Friday night. Did you hear about that? Do you know where that's at? Um, I heard... Um, you know, or I found this really engaging. And what did you think of that? And there's usually anywhere you see people with the name tags on is going to be, you're going to be welcomed to be in that area. So um, I hope you don't, I hope you find that, um, that, that way, the friendliness. <laughs> Wendy says, wherever I am, there's a party. Not always until I sneak off so I can actually not I can get some rest. Um, but the goal of these conferences and the goal of the skeptic camps that I help run is not just to get education, to get knowledge about what's going on in our community. I mean, that's very important, obviously. But my goal is to find the leaders that we're going to need to take us into the next decade. Um, we've got a lot of people who've been doing this a long time and, you know, it's only a matter of time before we're burned out or die or something. So we need to find the new leaders who have new ideas. And I hope those people show up at these conferences. I'm not going to throw my, throw my weight behind somebody who's, and there's quite a bit of that. I'm not gonna throw my weight behind anybody who's brand new on the scene, like, you know, charismatic or whatever. I, I like to see somebody come and, you know, do their shoveling of, uh, you know, moving tables around and, and participating and showing up and that kind of thing before, you know, they move into a leadership role. But I think there are a lot of people out there who are looking for projects, looking for ways of giving back. And yes, sometimes it's money. If you can donate, please donate. There's lots of places to donate that would really be beneficial. People to who are doers, who like Wendy and Heather, who are going to, who just put this on. Nobody asked them, they're just doing it. Um, coming with the idea and it, I mean, it's just fantastic. Um, there are a lot of people who are like that, who would like to do those kinds of things that don't know that this is scientific skepticism is a thing um, and they need to be introduced to it. So make sure you take lots of selfies, take lots of photographs so that you can get those pictures onto your social media so that in the future people go, what is this? Oh, I didn't know you were into that. Oh, I love this person. I've watched them on YouTube all the time or I've heard their podcast for years. I didn't know you were into that or what is that? You know, so you're, you're representing our community by coming to this. And there are conferences all over the world. And there are small, little, tiny conferences 
that we're trying to put on in small places. So if you're interested in starting a group activity in a town near you, let's, let's be in touch. I'll talk to you about it. No raccoons allowed. So <laughs> those who know, know. Um, this will be my first conference without Mark Edwards, so this should be interesting. Um, really looking forward to uh, seeing everybody. Um, I've made so many great friends over the years at these conferences and meeting you guys in other places. You're welcome to join my trivia group, my trivia team, my trivia game that's going to be this upcoming Thursday. It'll be the last one before we get to PsyCon. And um, yeah. I'm looking forward to the conversations. I'm looking forward to seeing lots of people getting lots of photographs and getting lots of hugs. And um, yeah. So leave me comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Or other people who've been here many, many times will do the same thing. Ready for trivia night. <laughs> Kat goes to her all her trivia night. She's so awesome. She wears a tiara when she goes. You don't have to be as fancy as her. All right, everybody. Sorry this is so long, but you know, I've got a lot to say and why not? I'm looking forward to seeing you.